Hey everybody, this is Tracy here to review episode 10 of Queen Sugar, which is entitled So Far. Um, this episode had a lot going on, so I think this is going to be a long video, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that it's not as long as the actual episode was. So let's get started. Um, the show opens up with Micah, and he has shown up at St. Josephine's High School to watch Kiki. Um, she's the head of the cheer team there, and so, you know, he's sitting there watching her and salivating over her, you know, because he's mesmerized with Miss Kiki. And so when she ends practice and comes off the court, she goes over and she's talking to Micah. Micah. And, you know, she pretty much wants to know why Micah isn't in school. And she tells him that, you know, she can see his SAT scores dropping by the day. And, you know, and it got me to thinking, why isn't Micah in school? Because like I say, you know, Kiki is very spunky. You know, she has, she doesn't hold anything back. And so, you know, she's telling Micah that, you know, him showing up is going to start rumors and people are going to be wondering, you know, what's going on between the two. And she pretty much wants to know if Micah is clapping for anybody else, which translation means, you know, do you have another boo? Is there another woman? Because I'm not wasting my time with you, is if there is. So Kiki tells him that, you know, she's figured out that Micah needs some company. So she's going to stop by Aunt Violet's house and um but for him not to get too excited because it's not going to be a Netflix and chill type of night. And so, you know, you can tell Micah is excited. And so uh, Kiki, you know, she's the type of chick that, you know, wants guys to open doors for her. So as they were standing at the door, she was looking at Micah like, um, are you going to open that door for me? So he catches on and he opens the door. And so um, I just think they're cute together. And like I said in the last episode, glad Micah has someone um to keep him company. Oh, and also, uh, I noted that I think that uh, Kiki reminds me a lot of Nova, but I think Micah sees in her like that take charge attitude that his mom possesses. So next we have Nova and Chantal, and they're in the kitchen, and Nova, um, you know, she's at the stove cooking, and Chantal, you know, she's walking around with a t-shirt and her panties on, you know, so they got that after sex glow thing, you know, taking place in the moment, you know, they're all, you know, cheesy and in love and stuff. And so, um, Chantal is setting the table and she comes across an article in the, and it says that Nova is going to be on a panel that's going to be led by Melissa Harris Perry. And, um, uh, for those who don't know, um, she's actually a real person. She used to have a show on MSNBC, but they parted ways over the summer, um, wasn't really a good split, but they did part ways. And so Chantal is immediately in, you know, planning mode and she wants to make sure that Nova has good talking points and she's prepared, you know, to answer questions and, you know, to kind of further their agenda where they're talking about police brutality and the high incarceration rate. But Nova, you know, she's being kind of standoffish and kind of like she doesn't want Chantal involved and you know she's telling her you know don't worry about it i have everything under control and then she kind of like ends the conversation you know by having chantal come over and um taste the food that she's cooking but that only distracts her for a few seconds because chantal's back on it again and then nova kind of like just tells her you know hey come on let's eat this food you know while it's still hot so charlie's trying to reach someone on the phone when ralph angel calls and lets her know that they need to meet and so we have Charlie, Nova, Prosper, and Ralph Angel, and they're over at the farm, and they're talking. And then Aunt Violet walks in because she's there to take Blue to school. And so we learn that none of the migrant workers have returned um, because they're afraid to come back on the property because of the two murders. So they don't know how they're going to um, harvest the crop without any workers. And so I thought with the whole, you know, meeting with the workers and praying for them and everything was... Um, you know, had smoothed everything out, but I guess I was wrong. Or maybe, you know, like I still believe that the Landry's are behind this whole thing. One thing I noticed is that Prosper and Aunt Vi, you know, they seem to have a little chemistry going on in this episode. So, you know, I think Hollywood better watch out, you know, because Prosper's probably more Aunt Vi's age or, you know, maybe they're just really good friends. But anyway, he lets her know that the um, restaurant where she worked at, the diner, that it has been closed down, you know, and she didn't know that. And so as they're talking, Darla, you know, she comes walking through uh, the house into the kitchen, you know, like she lives there or something. And we learned that she's there to pick up blue that her and Ralph Angel have made arrangements 
that on Mondays and Wednesdays she's going to be taking Blue to school, but nobody bothered to tell um, Aunt Violet about that. So um, let's pause here for a moment because I thought before the storm took place that when Darla showed up at Ralph Angel's house that she was, you know, dressed really nice in her business attire and that he said that she worked for City Hall. But in this episode, Darla has on that green polo shirt where she was working in the garage. Um, remember, she was the um, attendant and the guy was like really mean to her. So not sure if that's a mistake or if Darla works for a garage that's at City Hall, which... Um, kind of negates the whole thing about the guy when he was threatening to fire her uh, because she wanted to leave to go to the funeral because you know city workers have a little more job security than that and you can't just be um, threatening people because they say that they're leaving because their shift is over. So as Aunt Violet, you know, is telling Darla, you know, she wasted her time because she's taking Blue to school. Ralph Angel walks in, you know, he apologizes and let her know that, um, you know, going forward, Darla's going to be picking um, Blue up. And so, you know, everybody around the table is looking like, oh, no, hell, you didn't. And, you know, why are you doing this? Why is Darla back? You know, but nobody says anything. So later on, we have Aunt Violet and she's working in her garden and, you know, she's planting new plants. When Hollywood walks up and he has like a tray of African violets, you know, not violets, and though she's doing a new thing, she's going in a different direction in her garden and in her life. And so he can take his um, violets back to Africa. And so Hollywood's not hearing it. You know, he's letting her know that, you know, she's been angry long enough. He's not going anywhere. He loves her and that he's just ready to get back to them being how they were um, before, but I think, um, although I want them to stay together, it's going to be hard to get back to where they were before, but I do hope, um, Violet kind of mellows out a bit. And so Hollywood sets the tray down on the ground and he turns around and walks away. And then I think she kind of realizes, you know, she's been a little hard because then she starts uh, taking the African violets out of the plot and, um, like she's going to plant them, you know, intermingle them in the new plants that she had um, already put into the ground. Ralph Angel, you know, he's at the school to pick Blue up and he learns that the kids are going to the zoo. And, you know, Blue is so cute because he says, we're going to see lions, tigers, bears, and kangaroos. And it's just like... Uh, he is so cute. So he gives his dad his uh, permission slip. And of course, Ralph Angel signs the permission slip, you know, and he's talking to the teacher. And um, I'm glad that he signed that permission slip in uh, pencil because later on, um, I think he goes to take Blue to school the next day or something. And the teacher gives him the permission slip back and tell him that the school administrator says that he can't sign the permission slip that has to be signed by Aunt Violet because she's the legal guardian. And so, of course, you know, uh, Ralph Angel, he's not only embarrassed, you know, that he can't sign the permission slip, but he's also, you know, upset, you know, and the teacher tells him, and I think her name is Miss Ruiz. Miss Ruiz tells him that, um, you know, the argument isn't with her. She knows he's a good dad and, you know, but it is um, school policy that the legal guardian is the one that has to um, sign the permission slip. We're back at Nova's and I'm not sure if it was later that day or the next day, but Chantal is at her house and she's having a meeting with three or four other ladies to kind of brainstorm, you know, talking points for Nova's um, panel discussion with Melissa Harris um, Perry. And Nova comes in and she's like, you know, why are these people here? And so Chantal is like explaining that they would have met at someone else's house, but there was like a plumbing problem or something. So Nova, you know, tells her, let's go in the kitchen and talk. So they go into the kitchen and she's like, what are you doing? And Chantal, you know, pretty much explains what she had said when they were at breakfast. Like, you know, this is our opportunity. We got to seize this moment. We got to get our ideas out there and promote our agenda. So we're working on your talking points and, you know, how you should respond to, you know, different questions that may come up. And um, Nova didn't like that idea at all. You know, she was like, she doesn't want anybody putting words in her mouth. And, you know, she has this under control and she pretty much doesn't need um, Chantal's help. And I'm thinking, man, if I had a team that was ready to get behind me and help promote my books and my, you know, help me get an agenda, you know, where I'm out touring and promoting my books, I'd be very happy about that. But Nova, you know, she's a one woman show. She doesn't want anybody's help. And, you know, I guess she never watched Mahogany, you know, where they said that, um, success is nothing if you have no one to share it with. Chantal and her team are leaving, you know, Nova offers to help drive them home, but Chantal um, declines the offer. And so as she's walking out the door, this guy 
I can't remember if his name is Rick or Rich or something, but you know, he's one of the guys I think that um, distributes for Nova and the herb business. And so, you know, he's basically, you know, telling Nova that, um, you know, sweet, um, too sweet and his family were evicted from their home. And that when they took the family to a shelter that um, too sweet freaked out and he hasn't been seen since. And so, um, you know, Nova's like, well, keep me posted. But then I'm thinking, what about the bail money? Because if Too Sweet has disappeared, does that jeopardize the $10,000 that she used to get him out of jail? Charlie's on the phone and she's trying to schedule an appointment with a sugar mill, which they hope to use to grind the sugarcane crops when they come in. And so after she ends that call, um, she's listening to a message that was left on her phone. And the message is from the school that Micah was supposed to attend. And basically they found out that Micah had been expelled from the school in California because of the inappropriate pictures that were found on his girlfriend's phone. And so they want to meet with Charlie Davis. And I can't remember if they said they wanted Micah to be there or not, but they want to have a meeting. And so as she was listening to the message, Aunt Violet walked in and so, you know, she heard the tail end of it. And then we have Blue and Ralph Angel. They come in, uh, Ralph Angel has picked Blue up from school. So Charlie stops the message and as her and Violet begin to talk, you know, Ralph Angel walks by and Charlie doesn't want um, Davis to be involved. You know, she's telling Aunt Vi that, you know, she thought she had worked everything out and taken care of everything. So Aunt Vi is telling her that, you know, despite what's going on between her and Davis, Davis is Michael's father. He needs to be involved and be a part of Michael's life and that, you know, they need to do what's best for Micah. And so, you know, we have Ralph Angel, he's in the background and he's listening. So we know he's already in his feelings, you know, about Aunt Vi not signing over that custody. So, you know, she's just giving him ammunition to use on her at a later date and time. So it's the first day of school and Michael's dressed, you know, he has on his shirt, his sweater and his tie. And, you know, he's excited about this new adventure he's about to embark on when Charlie walks in and lets him know that um, he won't be going to the school. And she explains to him, you know, that the school called and they want to have a meeting with her and Davis before he can... Um, began classes. And so of course, you know, Micah's upset, but what I couldn't figure out was if a day or two has passed, why didn't Charlie tell Micah, you know, that the people had called and that he might not uh, be starting school. And then this goes back to the whole thing of how long is she going to keep Micah out of school? Because like, I know there are laws that say kids have to go to school, but, you know, Charlie just seems to be unconcerned. You know, her main focus is getting Micah into this prestigious school, you know, thinking about his future. But dang, I'm thinking there are kids that have gone to inner city schools that have landed in Harvard. You know, it's not about always about the school that you attend, but this is about your grades and your ambitions and everything. And so I think she's putting too much emphasis on, you know, Micah going to the school. And I think that just is more about Charlie than it is about Micah. Aunt Violet is in the kitchen when Charlie and Micah, you know, they leave the bedroom where they were originally talking and they make their way into the kitchen as well, you know, so Aunt Violet hears what's going on. And so, you know, she's pretty much telling um, Charlie that there's nothing wrong with Micah going to a public school. And I think Micah would also be okay with going to the public school, you know, but Charlie, you know, she's just so demanding and controlling. And so she, um, Aunt Vi, you know, she makes the comment about the school costing $10,000 a year and, you know, is it really worth it? But then Micah lets her know, no, it's not $10,000, Aunt Vi, it is $36,000. So Aunt Vi can't hold her tongue when she gets that bit of information and she's like Charlie is that how you you know spend your money you know there are some people that don't even make thirty six thousand dollars a year and then without thinking Charlie responds and she's saying well you know this is why I'm sending him to the school because I don't want him to be one of those people and then she catches herself and realizes you know that Aunt Vi you know is one of those people you know she works at the diner so she probably only was making maybe $20,000 a year she was doing that. And so she tries to, you know, apologize, but of course Aunt Vi is already in her feelings and, you know, she doesn't want to hear the apology because now she knows her, um, her niece is a snob. The next thing we have Charlie and she's at the sugar mill meeting with one of the owners and his name is um, Jacob Boudreaux. 
and he's telling Charlie that the way they do their business is they grind the um, sugar cane for the farmers and then they do a 60-40 split on the profits with um, the farmers get the 60%. And so Charlie's letting him know, you know, that's ridiculous and that she's a sports agent and her take is only, I think she said 5%. And so the guy lets her know that he's very familiar with who she is, you know, and so basically he's not impressed. But in Louisiana, when it comes to the sugar cane, it's 60-40 split and she can take it or leave it. And so later we have them, you know, they were, he's giving Charlie a tour of the, um, of the mill and they seem to be getting along, uh, really well. You know, I don't know if Charlie realized that, you know, finally she's talking to somebody who's on the same um, level as her. And so she can relax a little bit and, you know, get into her business management mode. And so the guy's pretty much telling her the history of the sugar mill and letting her know that that mill, that particular mill has been in his family for so long and that it's older than him and Charlie. So when they get to the end of the tour, he tells Charlie don't focus so much on the 60-40 split because once they grind the sugar up, then it goes to a refinery and the refinery actually plays a bonus. And for a crop her size, she could be looking at a $400,000 bonus. And so I guess that's where the farmers actually make their money. So Aunt Vi, um, you know, she decides to go by the diner, you know, because if you remember um, Prosper told her it was closed. And so we have Clyde, the owner, and he's there and he's panicking because the health inspectors are on premise. And I guess that's why the diner had closed down. And so he goes to open the door for Vi and he's you know, telling her what's going on and he can't find some paperwork that he's looking for. And so, you know, he's telling Aunt Vi, you know, they're asking me when was the last time the, um, the filters were clean and when was the last time, you know, this was done. And so Violet knows all the answers to all the questions. And so he says, okay, so where's the paperwork, you know, to prove all this. And so uh, Vi is like, um, I don't work here anymore. I don't have to tell you anything. And so he's like, you know, Vi stopped playing. And so she basically manipulates him and holds the paperwork hostage until he offers her a management position. So Aunt Vi is now the manager of the diner. So later on, we have Aunt Vi and honey, she done went out and bought her some new clothes to celebrate her new promotion. And I must say, you know, I don't know how old Aunt Vi is, you know, the actress that plays Aunt Vi is in real life or even how old she is on the show, but honey, she was looking good, you know, in her dress. And so she's asking Charlie which one looks best. And Charlie, you know, tells her she liked the one, I think it was the black and white um, zebra stripe looking dress. And so she tells um, Charlie, you know, that she thought about what she had said earlier in the day about, you know, people not making more than um, $36,000. And so it prompted her to go to the diner. And so Clyde had offered her the management position. And so she wanted to thank um, Charlie. So after they, you know, talk about the dresses and everything, Charlie um, brings up, you know, about the, she had went to the mill and that she thought the prices were unfair. And so Aunt Vi, you know, lets her know that Sam Landry and the Boudreaux are actually, that they own all the mills in the area. So the farmers really have no choice, you know, when it comes to getting their sugarcane um, grinded, you know, so they have to accept those prices because there's nobody else to go to. And so when Charlie says that she met um, Jacob um, Boudreaux, um, Aunt Vi, you know, informs her that the two families are actually related and that, you know, they're all intertwined uh, through marriage. So I guess Landry's married some of the Boudreaux's and that they own 15,000 acres of uh, sugarcane crops in the St. Josephine area. Plus they own all the sugar mills. And she lets um, Charlie know that you know, her dad, Ernest, has spent, you know, the last few years of his life, you know, trying to get from under their power. But they're, you know, everybody's just pawns in their game and that there's really no escaping them because, you know, they own everything. So we're back at Ralph Angel's house and I guess it's Wednesday morning now because if you recall, he said that Dollar was going to be picking Blue up, taking him to school on Mondays and Wednesdays. And so, um, you know, Dollar walks into the house, no key or anything, but I guess that's what they do in the country. They leave their doors unlocked. And so, um, and I know you guys hate when I talk about Dollar, but I don't trust her. And, um, you know, I just don't trust Miss Dollar. We're going to leave it at that. And so she sees the uh, permission slip laying on the table. You know, and she says, oh, Blue's going to the zoo. And then uh, Ralph Angel, you know, for some reason, he hasn't given Aunt Violet this uh, permission slip to sign. Because I'm sure she said, if he told her, 
you know, Blue gets the chance to go to the zoo, she would be more than happy to um, sign the permission slip and provide some lunch. And hell, she'll probably go as a chaperone if they needed one. But, you know, he's holding on to the permission slip. So he tells um, Darla, you know, that he needs permission, you know, to give his son permission to go on the trip and that um, he doesn't understand, you know, why Aunt Violet won't just turn over um, custody of Blue. And so, you know, Dollar's looking at him like, well, Blue is my son and I can't see him without your permission. So what the hell is you talking about? And so, you know, but she tells him, you know, she understands how he feels. And so as they're leaving, uh, Ralph Angel tells Blue, you know, to have a good day. And then, you know, they go to the door and Dollar's opening the door and then he calls out her name. He's like, Dollar, you know, you have a good day too. So them two about to join together and go out the unviolent. So in the next scene, we have Hollywood and he's cutting Ralph Angel's um, hair. And so, you know, Ralph Angel starts crying the blues about how he doesn't have custody of Blue and Aunt Violet, you know, is being unfair. And so, you know, Hollywood, you know, he tells him that Aunt Vi is just protective of Blue because of everything that's happening because she doesn't um, trust Darla. And I don't know why everybody understands that, but Ralph Angel, he seems to be taking it um, as a personal insult against him and his parenting skills. And so, you know, the conversation changes and Hollywood lets um, Ralph Angel know that he's filed for a divorce against Leanne because he has to do you know, he has to be a man about it and do the right thing if he expects to keep Aunt Violet. Next, we have Micah. And he's outside under that, you know, that real big, pretty um, oak tree. I think it's an oak tree, but it's a really huge tree on the property. And um, he's sitting under that when Kiki shows up, you know, and she lets him know that just as she predicted, you know, everybody wants to know if they're a couple, you know, and how did she land Micah, you know, so quickly. And so, you know, Micah's moping and he lets her know that he didn't get into the private school that he wanted to go to. And then he explains everything that happened, you know, at his old school and him getting expelled because of the pictures, but they weren't his pictures. He makes sure she knows that. And so Kiki is like, you know, was your ex-girlfriend white? You know, and Micah's like, yeah. And she's like, well, there you go. You know, that's what you get for messing with them. <laughs> so, um, Kiki asks Micah, you know, why can't um, he just go to a public school and she tells him that, you know, the kind, the guy that she's trying to get involved with, you know, he would be someone that makes their own decisions. So she about to boost Micah up where he go and uh, raise up the Charlie and they both gonna get their feelings hurt. But, um, you know, the girl must not have met Charlie before. That's all I can say. So Micah's blushing and carrying on and he wants to kiss Kiki. And so Kiki tells him, you know, if you're going to do it, just go ahead and do it. You know, life is short and everybody got time to be playing with you and I need to get back home. And so I was like, all right, little girl. You know, so Micah had his first little kiss with Miss Kiki and, uh, you know, it was sweet and innocent. But uh, Charlie going to have a fit if she look out that window and see what's going on in that backyard. <laughs> So Charlie goes back to Jacob and lets him know, you know, that they have a deal, you know, but he's all ready to go for the jugular, you know, he ain't worried about no deal, no 60-40 split, he wants that land. And he lets her know that the Boudreaux's are willing to pay them $4 million for their farm. I was like, oh wow, <laughs> okay, because that farm wasn't, I think, was it 800 acres, I think it is, but he's willing to offer them $4 million for it, so, you know, that's something for Charlie to think about. So, Ralph Angel goes to Aunt Violet, you know, to have her um, sign the permission slip, you know, which she does, you know, no, I don't think anybody thought that she was going to have an issue signing the permission slip, and she's happy, you know, that Blue is going to the zoo, and so, um, you know, Ralph Angel takes the paper and he turns to walk away, but then he, you know, he got some, um, some encouragement, some strength, he got what he needed to turn around and ask um, Aunt Vi, you know, why he can't have custody of Blue, and, you know, so he stops and he says, you know, how do you think this makes me feel? And she's like, what? And he, you know, why do I have to get permission, you know, for my son to go to the zoo? And so he, um... You know, so he gets to crying and carrying on, and you know, and so he brings up the fact that he overheard her um, telling Charlie that Davis needs to be a part of Micah's life, and you know, letting her know that he felt that that was a double standard. And so I understand how Ralph Angel feels, um, but he needs to know that this is two different um, situations because in Davis' case, you know, Davis was a hoe and he was cheating and using prostitutes, you know, but that's totally different than the fact that. You know, Ralph Angel has been to prison and Darla is 
a recovering crack addict or whatever drug she was on. And not to mention, you know, prior to his father dying, which has only been a couple of months, we've seen you rob a store and we've seen you get involved with stealing the electronics from the job that, you know, he was on. So I don't think he grasps the fact that, you know, yeah, you've been out of jail for a year, but you haven't really shown stability but the past couple of months. And, you know, but Aunt Vi, you know, she loves her Ralph Angel. And so he tugs at her heartstrings and, you know, she's asking her, you know, when does he stop having to pay for his past? And so Aunt Vi, you know, she's taking in his, you know, what he's saying. And I think she's probably thinking about what Nova has said also about her getting her life. And so, but then all of a sudden she turns around and she walks away. And I'm like, dang, this shit, leave the boy standing there crying. But then a few seconds later, she comes back with the custody papers that he had given her earlier. I think it was a couple of episodes ago. And she goes ahead and signs the papers and tells him, you know, if he ever needs anything, don't be afraid to ask her for help. I don't know how they do things in Louisiana, but I know that um, here in Florida, the change of custody is not that simple. Because if somebody has legal custody or guardianship of a child, trust me, there's going to be some lawyers, some judges, some social workers, some mental health professionals. There's going to be a whole bunch of people involved. And um, I think to even kick it off, you need to petition the court that you want to change um, the hands of custody. So... I don't know if they're doing this for expediency, but um, it, this is just unrealistic, you know, this whole custody thing where she's just going to sign the papers. Then I guess he turns the papers in, you know, to the probation officer or whoever, or it basically doesn't turn them in to anybody. He just keeps the papers saying that he now has custody of Blue. That makes absolutely no sense to me. So I value this bike at the diner and when, you know, the scene opens up, all the workers, you know, the waitresses, they're there and they're mopping and cleaning the place up. And I think Vi had like a basket with some cleaning supplies also. So she goes behind the counter and then Hollywood enters the scene from like the back of the diner. So I don't know if he was there flirting with um, Roberta or if he knew that um, Aunt Vi was coming and he had went to the bathroom. I don't know where Hollywood um, surfaced from, but he's at the diner and he's telling Aunt Vi that he's getting ready to go back on the road because, you know, he's a truck driver and that he just wanted to congratulate her on her new position and, you know, say bye. And so she's kind of ignoring him at first. So he goes to walk out the door and then she turns around and she goes, oh, well, you know, can I offer you a cup of coffee? So... Two more steps closer to these two, you know, getting it together. So, you know, I love that because I love love. <laughs> so um, next we have Chantal and, you know, she's shown up to Nova's house. So I guess it's officially over between the two. She's there to get her things and Nova's standing in the yard, you know, with a duffel bag or something. And so she's asking Chantel, you know, is it really going to end this way? And Chantel is letting her know pretty much so. And so she brings up the fact that I guess she had went into one of Nova's um, dresser drawers and she found the picture of Calvin. And so she brings up, you know, the picture of the white guy, you know, with the haircut. Um, don't know what the haircut part meant. Maybe it's like a white supremacist haircut or something I don't know but basically points out you know he's a police officer and so that makes Nova a hypocrite because how can you be fighting for police brutality and everything that's going on with Too Sweet when you're sleeping with this white police officer that's part of a racist police um, force and so Nova's you know trying to say that it's two different things that you know there's things that she likes about Calvin just like there's things that she likes about Chantal and so Chantel's not buying it she basically tells Nova you know she's all over the place and she really needs to catch her life and make up her mind you know either you're for the cause or you're not for the cause but Chantel's not having it because she gets in her car and she drives off so I think that's the end of their little relationship so in the last scene, Charlie calls a meeting with her siblings and Aunt Vi and um, Prosper is there also. So I don't know if he was there working on the farm and was getting ready to leave. But anyway, they um, tell him to stay. And so Charlie um, tells them about her conversation with Jacob and the offer that he made. And also when she was um, meeting with Jacob, he pulled out this map and was kind of like telling her the history of the land and, um, you know, who owned what portions of the land. So Charlie has the map and she pulls the map out. And so Aunt Violet and Prosper, they look at each other because they know the history as well. But they, um, I think Ernest told them not to say anything unless Charlie and them asked, you know, 
for the information. So now they're asking. So Aunt Violet um, lets her know that the Bordelon ancestors were once slaves and they were owned by the Landry family. And so when slavery ended, some of the Bordelones migrated up north. I think she said to Chicago and Michigan or something. And the others stayed as sharecroppers. And Aunt Violet's grandfather, I think she said it was her grandfather, um, he was one of the people that went north and, you know, he worked really hard and sent money back. And it was like a juxtaposition of the migrant workers, you know, that were killed on the farm and, you know, how they... The workers work to save money to send back to their family for a better life. So, so when the um, Great Depression took place, the Bordelon family bought um, that strip of land from the Landry families because the Landrys were doing uh, really bad financially and needed the money. But when the country recovered, the Landrys wanted the land back, but then there was something, you know, some issue going on with the deed and they couldn't prove who actually owned the land. So the Landrys basically terrorized the Bordelon family and ended up killing four family members, including Violet's grandfather, who I guess had returned to try and help the family out during this fight. So after all of that happened, um, the deed resurfaced. And so they were able to prove that, you know, the Bordelons did indeed, um, did in fact own the land. And so um, Vi was saying that, you know, ever since then, the Landrys have done everything in their power um, to make it hard for the border loans, you know, because they really want this land back. And so um, Vi says that um, it was the fight for the land that actually killed Ernest and that he wanted the land to stay in the family because of what happened. And so Nova, you know, she says it best that um, the land has been more than paid for. And so the show... Um, ends with Charlie going outside and she's like looking out, you know, onto the land and then Nova and um, Ralph Angel come out and join her. And so the show ends that way, you know, where they're basically vowing that they're not going to give up the land to the Landrys or the Boutros. So this was, you know, such an emotional scene for me because, you know, I mean, the whole show was emotional, but that scene about the land was, you know, emotional. It was kind of personal to me because my dad, um, you know, he was the last of his siblings and his parents had left them land. And so my dad, you know, he used to pay the taxes every year, pay the taxes every year, but nothing was actually happening with the land. And we basically was wanting to hire a lawyer so we can, you know, get everything straightened out because our last name is spelled wrong in certain places, you know, birth certificates are missing, but never could get the you know, the remaining family members to, um, you know, to agree. They just seem to be okay, you know, paying this $2,000 every year for these property taxes. So after my dad died, you know, I tried once again, you know, to get the family to come together and say, you know, what we're going to do with the land. But, you know, they had gone in and cut trees down, didn't tell anybody, you know, they made money from cutting the trees down. And now the county was like, they wanted the, you know, the trees replanted. And so I just wiped, you know, washed my hands of it. I didn't want anything to do with it. But watching this episode, like really felt bad because, you know, my dad, you know, he had wanted to keep that land in the family. But I think that, you know, history is so important and, you know, families should sit down and tell the story, you know, so people like me don't think it's just, you know, some land that I'm never going to live on. So what difference does it make? You know, maybe if my dad had told me, you know, how my grandparents had acquired the land and that type of thing, it would have um, had more sentimental value to me. But, you know, I think that, you know, as our generations are passing away and hell, I'm 52 years old. So as my generation um, passes away, you know, we need to share our histories and our stories with our kids because it is so important. And, um, and I think it enriches their lives and make them see things in a totally different way when they know the history of their family and where they came from. So that's it. You know, as always, go ahead and leave your comments below. And if you haven't done so, you know, I really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. So until next time, I'm out and enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.